Hi, and welcome to Beyond the Data. I'm Dr. Phoebe Thorpe, and here with me today is Rear Admiral Wanda Barfield, the Director of the Division of Reproductive Health here at CDC. Wanda, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Phoebe. Your session that from two years ago about neonatal abstinence, we we're rerunning. Part of the reason we're rerunning it is because the opioid epidemic continues to worsen in the United States. Um, what is neonatal abstinence? So um, it, it's great that we're doing a, another opportunity to talk about beyond the data here. Neonatal abstinence syndrome is something that I know very personally. In addition to directing the Division of Reproductive Health, I'm also a neonatologist, which is a specialist in pediatrics that focuses on the care of critically ill newborns. Neonatal abstinence syndrome is a withdrawal syndrome that occurs for babies who've been exposed to opioids during pregnancy. Now, this may occur under a variety of circumstances, but the challenge here has been more recently, we've seen it as a result of the opioid crisis. So neonatal abstinence syndrome can occur when there's withdrawal that a pregnant woman has after her baby is born and that baby has been exposed to either prescription substances that include substances like Vicodin, Oxycontin, or it can be illicit substances that can also include heroin or it can be exposure to um, medication-assisted treatment, such as buprenorphine or methadone. And these infants have symptoms that occur about 48 to 72 hours after birth. And these symptoms are fairly distressing. They include things like excessive crying, inconsolability, they may have difficulty feeding, they may have watery stools or diarrhea, they may also um, have seizures. And so these particular symptoms and signs need to be treated and they need to be treated in a gradual method. So when these newborns have the neonatal abstinence syndrome and are going through with Withdrawal, what, what needs to be done to treat them? So the treatment can be somewhat complicated and protracted. So these infants need time in terms of a gentle weaning from these medications. And so as a result, they're given medications so that they can reduce these symptoms that we're seeing when they're initially having withdrawal symptoms. Most infants may show signs of withdrawal anywhere between 48 to 72 hours after birth. Because it takes time for these infants to recover, it means that they need close and careful monitoring in either a newborn intensive care unit, or they may need very close monitoring in a special care nursery. And so as a result, that means they've got prolonged hospitalization, and as you know, that can be expensive. They also need to be closely monitored for these signs and symptoms that could potentially get them into a lot of trouble. We know that in the United States, in fact, that the cost of neonatal abstinence syndrome is about $2.5 billion, with the major burden being borne by Medicaid at about $2 billion. Each year? Each year. Wow. What, what are we doing? So it, I would imagine that if you, um, the increased use of, op of opioids, well, use and abuse of opioids in women who are pregnant is part of the reason that the neonatal abstinence syndrome is going up. What are some of the important things to help the moms, uh, with the women who are pregnant, to prevent neonatal abstinence syndrome? Yes, Phoebe, you bring up an important point. It's, you know, it's important to note that we, we coined the issue of neonatal abstinence syndrome as really the tip of the iceberg. This is really sort of the final result of a much more complicated issue. And for every baby that we see with neonatal abstinence syndrome, there's a mom who's in great need of support. Mm -hmm. But it goes beyond that. This is really a life course issue. And we really need to think not only of the care and concern of the baby, but the care and concern for mothers and even for women prior to pregnancy. You know, many women may not even know that they're pregnant during the time that they may be using a prescription drug. And as a result, they then may find themselves pregnant and 
treatment during that time may be more challenging. However, there is an opportunity for us to better monitor pregnancies and help women with medication-assisted therapy. Yeah, you bring up a point the, that was uh, one of the things that I was going to ask about, and it came out in the session about medication, medicated, medication-assisted therapy. What what is that, and how what it, what is being done to to help women during their pregnancy? So, medication-assisted therapy is an opportunity to treat women during pregnancy, but so that they can also be monitored in terms of the use of these substances that include either methadone or buprenorphine. And it also allows an opportunity to not only monitor that woman during her pregnancy, but to help to identify an infant who may potentially have neonatal abstinence syndrome. However, it may be a much more controlled um, path rather than sort of a quick withdrawal. Yeah. It's, so it's very important to, to try to get the women the, the treatment they need while they're pregnant. Yes. And I've had opportunities to, you know, talk with women and talk with families who may be on medication-assisted therapy and what they might anticipate in terms of the days of, you know, during delivery and those subsequent days following delivery. And I think that's a really helpful approach. What else needs to be done to reduce or prevent neonatal abstinence syndrome in the United States? So when we, we're thinking about prevention, again, you know, that's an important role that CDC plays in terms of prevention. More broadly, we're really looking at how we can collectively, as an agency, address the opioid crisis, and that's really through um, our combined efforts. So just thinking about what we can do at CDC here, we're really focusing on work collectively. As you know, CDC has produced a lot of information about appropriate prescribing. Mm -hmm. And so CDC has guidelines on appropriate prescribing guidelines for physicians. And that's a very important component that we need to disseminate and help educate providers. You know, the other component is surveillance. It's so important not only that we have good and accurate surveillance, but that it's as rapid as possible. And CDC is really working toward making the data available much more rapidly, whether that's, you know, and this is more broadly, I'm not just talking about neonatal abstinence syndrome, but, you know, what can we do in terms of addiction, emergency room um, mm -hmm. related issues, um, the unfortunate event of overdose. So how can we get that information out more quickly so that people can respond? Mm -hmm. For states, there's a lot of exciting work that's going on in the area of what's called perinatal quality collaboratives. And these are teams of healthcare providers as well as public health providers that are working together to think about evidence-based interventions to really improve the care of infants with neonatal abstinence syndrome as well as improving the care for mothers. So specifically, for example, the challenge that we have now is that our treatment protocols are still somewhat subjective when we're trying to treat infants with NAS, but in the context of a quality improvement framework, mm -hmm. we might be able to do a more standardized, regimented uh, process of identifying infants at risk, appropriately treating them, and then perhaps reducing those hospital lengths of stay for those newborns. There's also um, better techniques, for example, promoting um, maternal infant bonding and promoting breastfeeding is also a good way to help reduce the length of stay for newborns with regard to neonatal abstinence syndrome. So what I hear is surveillance so they can help figure out where the problem is yes. and then also quality improvement so that they, the solutions that we offer are better too and combining those to make it yes. better, yes. better prevention. Um, if other people are interested in knowing more about clinicians or others about um, uh, the opioid use, misuse, or NAS, where can they find that? Well, there are several resources. So first for providers, there, there's great opportunity through the CDC um, 
guidelines um, in terms of prescribing practices, but there's also um, clinical groups that are very helpful. For example, the American Academy of Pediatrics has guidance on the care of infants with neonatal abstinence syndrome, as well as the American Association of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, or the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, and they have guidances for uh, the treatment of women during pregnancy. Thank you so much for joining us. This is such an important topic, and it's, uh, like you said, it's the tip of the iceberg, and so it isn't always seen well. I really appreciate your efforts to make it better known and to help these children and well, their moms. Thank you too, Phoebe, for raising this important issue. And thank you for joining us for Beyond the Data. We'll see you next time.